Welcome to the Experts in Medicine talk series. This series is brought to you by Handbooks in Healthcare, leading publisher of clinical pocket references by the world-leading medical experts. Today we are joined by Elijah Saunders and Wallace Johnson, leading nephrologists and authors of Contemporary Diagnosis and Management of Hypertension in African Americans. Dr. Elijah Saunders, uh, professor of medicine in the area of cardiology and um, the head of the hypertension uh, section at the University of Maryland. In the hypertension field, it's a lot of uh, interest because of the large number of people that have hypertension, estimated to be more than 70 million at the present time. But unfortunately, a large number of people are not being control is estimated that of the hypertensives out there, about two-thirds of them are not being controlled. The problem of the lack of control probably has to do with the multiple factors related to uh, both patients as well as the providers. So in the field of hypertension, there is a lot of interest in guidelines because the guidelines help uh, physicians to determine the best way to diagnose and to treat uh, hypertension. So we're very excited about the fact that the Joint National Committee number eight has just been uh, convened, and we expect in the next uh, eight to nine to ten months that they will release uh, the new guidelines, which basically will tell doctors uh, what's new in the hypertension field in terms of knowledge, in terms of research, and in terms of medication that are prescribed. There are a lot of new clinical trials that have been done during the past few years, so the new uh, guidelines will incorporate the recommendations based upon results of the clinical trials. In addition to the Joint National Committee guidelines, which will be for the general population, uh, ISHIP, the, the International Society on Hypertension in Blacks, will also be releasing their new guidelines uh, this coming year, sometime in 2009. We're very excited about that because we know that hypertension is a more severe problem in African Americans. It comes on earlier in life, and the outcome from hypertension is much worse in the African American population. So there's a lot of interest and excitement in guidelines that are geared more specifically towards treating the African American hypertensive patient. I suppose that the other excitement in the field of hypertension is the multiple studies that have been done related to drug therapy, especially combination therapy. Since there has been much more uh, interest and knowledge that combination therapy, that is two or more drugs prescribed for hypertension, in one fixed dose combination usually is a better way of treating hypertension. There's been a lot of excitement about that and many of the pharmaceutical companies are coming out with drugs in combination. Finally, in terms of new classes of drugs, we now are looking at new mechanisms of action and gearing therapy uh, towards treatment based upon mechanism of action. The latest category do for hypertension therapy is the direct renin inhibitors. And there's one uh, new direct renin inhibitor on the market but I suspect there would be more. There's also interest in pro-renin, which is the substance that renin comes from. I would suspect that there would be interest in, in drugs that either inhibit or block the formation of uh, pro-renin. Uh, pro a book that is soon to be updated, uh, a contemporary diagnosis and management of hypertension in African Americans, is very pertinent and very relevant at this time because of the challenges of treating the African-American patient and the fact that their evolution of new therapies for the black hypertensive, drugs that work better than our uh, older drugs for African-Americans. Uh, in this book, uh, of course, there will be much presentation of new data, new clinical trials done in African-American patients, and specifically, there will be the presentation of clinical trials that have been published uh, with certain therapies, certain drugs that have found to work very well in the African-American hypertensive. Hello, this is Dr. Wallace Johnson calling. I'm calling from the University of Maryland School of Medicine where I'm an assistant professor. 
and I work in the section of hypertension and vascular biology. I have a lot of interest in hypertension in African Americans, working with various organizations such as the American Society of Hypertension in Blacks, Association of Black Cardiologists, and the International Society of Hypertension in Blacks. was also pleased and also had the wonderful pleasure of having the opportunity to co-author with my colleague, Dr. Elijah Saunders, on the Contemporary Diagnosis and Management of Hypertension in African Americans, which was a very nice handbook that we put together. We have a lot that's new in hypertension. We have one new trial that's come out in particular called the ACCOMPASS trial, which for a hypertension specialist was very exciting because of the fact that it used a combination of an ACE inhibitor and a calcium channel blocker versus an ACE inhibitor and a diuretic. And interestingly enough, found that the ACE calcium channel blocker population, if you will, had a superior outcome compared to the other population, meaning the ACE diuretic population, indicating that we now have for the first time a trial specifically designed to look at fixed-dose combination therapy, and we found that when that trial was done, we have seen that the calcium channel block, if you will, base group along with the ACE inhibitor versus the ACE inhibitor diuretic group, the calcium channel blocker base group was found to be superior, approximately 20% superior in terms of major outcomes. We also have a lot of new information out on Horizon about combination therapy, looking at the combinations of ACE inhibitors and so-called angiotensin receptor blockers, as well as even newer things on the horizon with a new class of drugs called direct renin inhibitors. And in summation, what these trials have found so far and what's really been hot and large out in the hypertension area has been the fact that it looks like, for example, when you use the direct renin inhibitors in combination with something like an angiotensin receptor blocker, they may be, based on at least one trial, a difference in what kind of response you get with reduction in things like proteinuria or, if you will, diabetic nephropathy responses to this combination versus, say, other combinations. In addition to that, we have a lot of new information out about considering how guidelines may change in the upcoming months. Be stay tuned, if you will, for new updates from the American Society of Hypertension I mentioned a little bit earlier that I'm a part of in terms of talking about new ways to classify hypertension new ways to think about hypertension as it relates to other comorbid conditions such as high cholesterol, such as diabetes type 1 and type 2. How will these things be looked at in terms of how they interrelate? And in addition to that, how will we use medications which hopefully will have a beneficial effect on more than one disease entity at one particular time? We're also going to be looking out for new data that relates to how we're going to look at the community and how the community plays a role in not only just high blood pressure screening processes, but also in terms of research initiatives. Now we have a unique opportunity, I know at our institution, for a partnership between an academic community as well as a community hospital working together to bring about a common goal of reducing the risk of hypertension and diabetes. Other upcoming studies looking at the treatment of using some of the newer classes of antihypertensive drugs, meaning like we have a new beta blocker out, for example, that's called bistolic, that appears to be a very unique beta blocker, which now has, if you will, opened another lid of research in terms of how we can think about beta blockers differently than we looked at them before. And in terms of drug combinations, we've also seen, that's also, which also been exciting too, when I talked a little bit about the combination of ACE inhibitors, and now we have the combination of angiotensin receptor blockers and calcium channel blockers that now come on the horizon. And we found that that has been very, very influential, not only just in terms of its impact and good tolerance in large groups of patients studied so far, but also it appears they have robust, robust reductions in blood pressure, 35, 40, 40 plus point reductions in systolic blood pressure, something that with single-dose therapy was, of course, unheard of previously. So this concept of fixed-dose combination therapy and its advantages over single-pill combination therapy or even using two separate pill combination therapy is a very, very unique and wonderful aspect of hypertension treatment that's on the horizon that will be differently from before. So we look forward to seeing everybody who will hopefully now be walking through their offices and have the opportunity to have a handbook which will contain such valuable information such as looking at charts which relate to body mass index, new issue guideline information, 
new late-breaking clinical trial information, as well as a, if you will, prediction or almost prophecy about what may be happening in the future when it relates to hypertension in African Americans. Thanks for tuning in to the Experts in Medicine talk series, brought to you by Handbooks in Healthcare. If you are interested in purchasing copies of this or any other titles by Handbooks in Healthcare, please call 800-860-9544 or email custserve at hhcbooks.com. All Handbooks in Healthcare titles retail for under $25 a copy and can be purchased in bulk quantities at substantial discounts. Handbooks in Healthcare can be found on the web at www.hhcbooks.com.